You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 466. Thanks guys for hanging out with us today. We appreciate it. Hope you're having a great week. We also appreciate the continued support from our sponsors like Videoblocks.com, a subscription-based video and audio site, so you can get copyright-free music, you can get copyright-free video, motion graphics, and so much more. Loops, everything. If you go to Videoblocks.com forward slash drone, 2016, you as a listener of Ask Drone You can get $100 off an annual subscription to that site. Absolutely. It's a great deal. There's a just a ton of great material on there that we're sure you can plug into whatever you're doing. Definitely, guys. But again, thank you for listening. Thank you for the reviews on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have found the show useful, informative, or you want to share it with someone else to make yourself look cool, whatever the reason is... We appreciate you sharing the podcast. But other than that, it's been a good weekend. We're back in the studio. We are ready to answer some questions. Are you ready, Rob? Ready to rock. And uh, yeah, this is a question from Mike. And actually, I don't know where Mike is. I don't think it was noted. But nonetheless, we're going to play it. And I think it's something that a lot of people are probably wondering about. So here we go. Cool. Hey, guys. My name is Mike. And I have a question about pictures and videos captured before completing the Part 107 certification. I'm the lucky owner of a new DJI Mavic Pro, and I've been flying it for a couple of weeks now recreationally. I plan on getting the Part 107 certification, and I'd like to know whether the pictures and videos that I'm getting now, before I take the test, whether they can be sold once getting the certification. I'm guessing that since technically I'm flying recreationally right now and practicing with my new drone, that they are not eligible for sale at all, even after I get my certification. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks. So, Mike, thanks for the question. And, guys, by the way, if you have a question like Mike, go to askdroneu.com. Submit it there. We'll get it on there just as soon as we can. We appreciate every single one of them that comes in. Definitely. I thought it was uh, quite interesting that he noted at the end what he thought the answer was. Mm -hmm. um, I think our an answer today is going to be based off of what we have been told um, from the FAA themselves. I think that this is kind of a tricky one, though. because It's pretty gray, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I think, well... I don't think it's definitively noted, is it? Like, for example, it doesn't say if you get footage prior to this point in time. Yeah, but it's remember not that specific. the FAA did put out a statement, what was it, a year and a half ago before 107 about just that, that if you are taking footage for recreational use and your intent mm -hmm. was to practice or your intent was recreational, whatever, and you were offered by someone to buy that footage, that the fact that it was after the fact... Uh, that you your initial intent was not to sell it, that it was okay yeah. if you had the license, to clarify again, if you had the license. So the way that I understand it, Rob, is that you cannot fly commercial missions whatsoever. If, if there is an intent, when you got your drone, you are heading to this place, you're about to take off. If there is an intent in your mind to sell the footage, um, to use it for commercial purposes, to use it as a trade. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big one. That's also a test question on the 107. Um, to use it as a trade. It is not compliant with 14 CFR 107. Yeah. No, I, I think that makes sense. And I think most people would agree with that. So then I think maybe the next logical question, Paul, is, well, how how is the FAA specifically going to be able to come back and determine what my intent was? So, and, and I think one of the ways that we can answer that question is to say, well, what is your footage? So, for example, if you go out, you're not licensed, and you don't even necessarily, you don't have an agreement or a contract with, say, a dealership, mm -hmm. but you go and you fly a dealership, I think it would be easy for the FAA to say, I think we're going to say that you had some intent to do something with because that footage down the road. Because why else would you be flying there? And you probably got right. permission to fly there. And well, if we were to subpoena your client, which a federal subpoena coming about you to your client is mm -hmm. not going to look good. Yeah, absolutely. Versus, um, let's see another example off the top of my head. You're out at the beach. You're flying. There's not a lot of people around, so you're not flying over people. We want to make that clear. And let's say there's some sort of a resort on a cliff overlooking the beach that you happen to go by and get some really cool footage of, but you've got a whole string of footage that doesn't include that. I think you can make an argument. You post that, 
that place comes to you later and says, hey, we really like that footage. Can we use it? Maybe that would be something different. So you could say, well, our intent was never to sell that. They saw it. They came and saw us and they sought us out and we sold it to them. Maybe you could get away with something like that. They got their license. Correct. Yeah. But your intent ultimately in the very beginning when you go fly can't be for commercial purposes. True. True. All right. Here's my next dilemma. I like how you play devil's advocate on me and I'm throwing it right back at you. (laughs) All right. Here we go. You're a new pilot. You're flying for practice just outside of your house, Mm -hmm. but you happen to be flying at sunset for about 30 minutes to get a nice little time lapse of the city Mm -hmm. and you're not licensed, but you're practicing. Right. You get your license and you want to sell that footage for stock video. Mm-hmm. Just like stock video, sunset, time lapse, Albuquerque, which I, I say this because last night I was over at Sarah's uh, parents' house, mm-hmm. put the bird up for an hour, did a time lapse, slowly zooming into the mountain. So nice little hyperlapse. Nice. Um, and you are licensed. I am. Yeah, this, <laughs> but let's assume you weren't. This is true. Uh, <laughs> I am licensed. Um, but, you know, like, let's say I wasn't licensed and mm-hmm. I did that and I got licensed two months later. What about that? I, again, I think if you're intent and, and, and you are putting yourself out there a little well, bit, I, I think, I think just, sorry, I'm going to say this. I think that if in that case, it'd be extremely difficult to prove intent. It would be extremely difficult on the side of the FAA to prove that your intent was to sell it. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I, but, but you are potentially exposing yourself to potential issues. Well, why couldn't you use the time lapse for like your little baby daughter's birthday like you showed the day from the beginning to the end and you ended it with that time lapse that's different than yeah than had you gone but now you're trying to sell it so the (laughs) point is that you are opening yourself up i i just don't think people are going to have issues with that particularly i think the rule should be really simple did you just buy a drone do you love flying it so much that you're like man my job blows well (laughs) then you're like a lot of other people and you should go out and get your drone license absolutely and And it only costs 47 dollars a drone use well and mike did say he's going to get his license but in the meantime he's practicing and, and that totally makes sense it's not an unreasonable position to be in and by the way guys we get that we're probably way over analyzing this whole situation but at the same time i think these are things that i think uh, we're giving people are going to have questions about good thought and and i had talked to an faa guy about this because at one time i uh sold some footage to a website and at when i shot it i had no intent right. of you know selling it well if we go by the standard that the american legal system is supposed to go by you're innocent until proven guilty right unless you're in immigration court Yes. Oh, okay. Well, let's assume we're not in immigration <laughs> court. <laughs> um, in which case, I, I don't know how they can prove that you had the intent unless, again, I'm not you, sure that they're really going to go out of their way unless it was a blatant violation of safety yeah, and someone else exactly. called you Exactly. So. I think that's the bottom line. If you're just out flying and practicing and you end up with some cool footage that you try to sell later, it's just hard to imagine you're going to have a problem with that. Yeah, totally. I think it's time to get Kevin Morris back on here. Yeah, Rack so up the questions for Kevin. Absolutely. So, by the way, if you have a question you'd like us to ask, uh, the FAA an for FAA you, FAA guy, send them in. Yeah, and actually, those we we could uh, accumulate at support at thedroneu dot com. So definitely, feel free I, to send them there. You know, I think that really our stance at drone you should be look if you like to fly recreationally keep it recreational because as soon as you muddy that gray area you like you said rob you open yourself up to liability Mm -hmm. and with it being so easy to get your license i mean to take a weekend to watch all of our replay videos to study i mean like on a standard 40 hour work week schedule which if you work 40 hours a week and you want to run a drone business, say goodbye to the 40-hour work week because it's not going to be 40 anymore. You're going to be working nights, weekends, days. But the idea is that you're going to love what you do. So it's not ever working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. So anyway, that being said, um, I think it's really clear that if you're interested in going commercial, just get your license. I think it's really easy. Um, and if you're serious about opening a business, Drone U is the place to go uh, for continuing education, for that community to support you and motivate you, um, and simply because of the quality of the content they're in. But that being said, I you know people know this podcast. They know that we're a school, but um, I would just like to see more people get educated. I really would, because you don't know what you don't know. 
And yeah. with so many people arguing against the tests that are like the FPV guys, it just uh, kind of strikes me as odd. That's like they're, I don't know. Like, yeah, well, you're going to have to get on board eventually. I, or get left behind. Yeah, or get left behind. And we had Sean on, and clearly he's on board, and he's a world champion. So totally. as a leader, I think he's doing the right thing and letting people know that it is the right thing to get the 107, no matter what. Really, if you're, if you, I guess it comes down to if you're going to be receiving any potential kind of compensation, be it a gift, be it uh, compensation for work or services performed. Trade. Trade. If you are trying to show your kid off to a boat company to get sponsored, you cannot fly without a license. Yeah. It's so simple. And then, like, how are you going to look to all the parents around you? Like, oh, the feds came knocking on my door. How was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do they want? A subpoena. Right. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So all that to say might get it done sooner rather than later. But the footage that you did get um, while you were practicing personally, I think you'd be fine. That's what she said. Anyway, (laughs) um, that was a random, not good one, but I, it was just silence and it was kind of awkward. I didn't know really where to pick up, but anyway, guys, I hope this show helped you out. Uh, if you do want to turn your passion into profit, good news, you can join the number one premier community for online training and drone training. And that is drone you, but anyway, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is ask drone you.